Hi, my scholars. This is my school channel and my name is Abiola. Right there in this video section, we'll be walking through the topic sets. The set theory, the set examples, the types of sets, the symbols attached with sets. All you just need to do is to sit back, relax and enjoy. See you in the full video session. Welcome back to my school YouTube channel and right here in this video session we'll be considering the topic sets. Alright, we are going to look at the definition of sets. Of course, we are going to look into the types of sets as well, the symbols attached with set and the techniques. Okay, so once we have done all of this, then we are going to sort out some examples for us to better understand the concept and increase our confidence level regarding questions that we may encounter in writing different kinds of exams. So let's start with definition of set. Set can be defined as a collection of unique objects. Or you can still refer to set as a well-defined collection okay, of distinct objects. You know, this will just help you to determine if certain objects will fit into the description that you just Put up okay or description you just made all right so let's look at the types of sets before we do that i would like us to know that there are certain things that we should know about sets okay at first no matter how identical the elements are we are not permitted to repeat sets in our operations okay so let's look at the types of sets in doing that, it is important that we note the three parts of sets. We have the curly braces. Okay, this is what helps us to know that whatever expression you are putting forth is talking about sets. If you don't have this on your paper or on whatever device you are using, it's going to make your expression ambiguous. So this tells us that you are working around the concept of sets, the curly braces. As well, we talk about the variables. So this slash line we have here, okay, it means such that, okay, this will be better understood when we begin to dig deeper into the concept of sets. And as well, we have the other part, which is the inequality part, okay, like for instance, I have this. So this tells me that X is lesser than Y, okay, or if I have this, X is less than 4. So whatever values that we are going to be including in a certain set, Okay, it tells us that the value must not be up to 4. Very well. So, we've now considered the part of sets. Remember the curly braces, the variables, and the inequality. Okay, sometimes inequalities can be compound for us to better understand what we are doing. Like, for instance, if I have x is less than 4, or I can add it this way, 4 is less than x, okay, and x is less than than let me say 10 less than equals to 10 okay so you can see that this connection can be properly described by using and or 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 you use or so when you have to connect two inequalities together using and or that tells us a compound inequality of course these tools will be very useful when we are working around sets so let's go into the types of sets. So I can bring up the null set or the empty set. Okay, so the null set tells you that there are no members available. There is no member present in the particular set. For instance, let me say set A is a set, okay, of numbers that have capital letter. So we know that capitalization, okay, deals with letters, not numbers. So this, of course, is an empty set. So this symbol here can be used to represent an empty set, okay? So this is one type of set, the empty or the null set. 
Very well, we have other types. We have the subsets, we have the supersets, we have the proper subsets, we have the proper supersets, we have the equal sets, we have the equivalent sets, we have the power sets, we have the disjoint sets, we have the overlapping sets. Of course, as we go deeper into the topic, I'll be bringing out all of these types and we are going to explain them using some examples. So let's move ahead to the symbols used in sets. Okay, we have R. This R represents real numbers. You know, real numbers can be rational or irrational numbers. If you'd like to know more about this concept, all you just need to do is to visit our previous clip on fractions, decimals, approximations, and percentages. So R represents real numbers. Okay, Q implies rational numbers. Okay, Z means integers. You no know, integers are just numbers with negative or positive values. I can just put that forward. So we can have minus one or plus one. We can have plus two or minus three. All right, minus three. So this tells you that this is an integer or these are integers. Okay, so it's, it's a number that can carry negative or positive value. That works for integers. Okay, so when you say W, W tells you that you're talking about whole numbers. You know, whole numbers is actually referring to combination of these digits. All right, and that includes your 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So when you begin to match them together, 9, 0, that is 90, 1, 5, that is 15, 1, 2, that is 12. Okay, so those are all numbers. So W represents all numbers. Then we have N. N means natural numbers. Natural numbers are just the numbers that we walk around with, with only positive value. So when you have a number, probably minus 1, minus 1 is not... A natural number okay so it has a negative value so we are talking about whole numbers they are just numbers with positive value and they are non zero okay so natural numbers start from one two three four five and the list goes on so we have real numbers we have rational numbers we have integers we have whole numbers then we have natural number so when you see e in a set representation okay this tells you that the elements are actually even numbers so set of even numbers you know even numbers talk about two talk about four six eight ten twelve fourteen then we have o when you see o o talks about odd numbers set of odd numbers so if you are giving a representation and you are seeing such that the members are this O. Oh, so it tells you that you're talking about odd numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, and the list goes on. Okay, when you see P, P represents prime numbers. Okay, so set of prime numbers. So prime numbers start from 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and the like. Okay, so we can see that these are some symbols that we should be acquainted with when you are trying to profile solution to the problems that may appear in sets. Okay, the symbols do not end here. There are still much more symbols that we can consider, you know. There are symbols whereby when you have this, okay, or you have this, right, or you have this. Okay, so if I have this, you see these three symbols that I put up here, they actually mean, they mean um, cardinality or number of elements present in a particular set okay we have other symbols when you see this this delta sign or you see this okay all right this talks about a symmetric difference of sets all right so we are going to be seeing more symbols as we dig in deeper okay into the topic sets as well we talk about the techniques used to express or represent sets okay we can use the rooster form you know, the rooster form, you just list out the members by themselves. So, for instance, the rooster form here, let me say set A talks about the set of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, the listing it out, the listing out method, that is the rooster form. Okay, so if I want to use the set builder notation, okay, I'm just going to use certain property to describe what we have here. Okay, so that is when you will now see me do something like this. All right, X. Okay, or I can use the full colon. 
all right so we have this such that x okay i can say x is since we have one to five so i can say x is greater than or okay let me have it from one let me start with the figures one is less than or equals to x okay x is less than or equals to five okay so we can see this so this is a set builder notation you know i've just given a property i'm going to of course teach us how to read this notation okay so you can use the root style of the listing out method you can use the set builder notation you can use the interval notation okay the interval notation is just that you are using your brackets and your parentheses to represent a set okay i'm going to do more of that in continuation of this video session Okay, of course, we also have using graphing on your number line, or you know, using your number line to indicate if a set is closed or it is open. Of course, we can also use Venn diagram invented by John Venn, okay, to represent a particular set where you are going to show your universal set, your disjointed set, and what have you. Of course, we have other methods that we can use to, or techniques we can use to describe or express a set. So let's move ahead into the types of sets. Of course, you need to subscribe to have access to the full content of this video lesson. So how do you do that? Just click on the link in the description below. It's going to take you to the My School website. There we have provided you with information on how you can get into the active subscription. So do not forget to hit the like button. Click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification so you can get alerts immediately we put up the next video lesson just for you.